Hi, welcome to the ninth lecture on connectedness. This is part of topology series. Today we will start with uh, some uh, odd and end, some results which I could have done earlier, but what I tried, I did not do. I will do that. But the main thrust of today's lecture will be the so called connected couples. They are an important tool, this notion is an important tool to prove two spaces are not homeomorphic. <laughs> not to prove they are homeomorphic, but to prove they are not homeomorphic. Okay? So we will look at some examples. But let's see. I, I do not know whether I will be able to complete everything today. I may need one more lecture. Let us see. Okay. All right. So let me just save because last time I forgot it. Okay. So two results which I want to talk about is let's look at M and R. Okay. Similarly, you can do M and C also. This is N cross M real matrices I am sure all of you know that as a vector space M and R is isomorphic to R and squared as a vector space therefore I can give given an A I can give a norm on A okay for example this could be maximum of mod A J where one let I could I let J let I could M or you could also do the uh, standard Euclidean matrix a j whole squared i n j 1 to n and then take its square root any one of the norms okay this is a corresponding to our ma max norm this corresponds to our Euclidean norm and you can also do mod a j i n j running from 1 to n this corresponds to our real one norm okay so it does not matter the point is that and again as you know all these norms induce the same topology this is also we have seen in our earlier matrix space uh, course okay so now let us look at so so I can consider M and R as a topological space as a metric space induced by this metric D D of A B will be as usual norm of A minus B okay this is a metric space and here this is a topological space right okay now I want to look at a certain subsets the first foremost important subset I would like to look at is the so called GNRNR the set of matrices in MNR which are invertible that is A inverse exists but this you know this is the same as saying determinant of A non-zero right I hope all of you know this now this J and R is a subset of M and R okay I want to know whether this is connected right so when we dealt with continuous functions okay I had proved the determinant function from M and R to R given by x going to determinant of x this is continuous that's because it's a polynomial function polynomial function of degree n because you have the Laplace expansion like sigma of z and uh, okay x i i sigma i x x1 sigma 1 it's x n sigma n etc okay you know the determinant formula in the case of n equal to 2 if I write a b c d the determinants a d minus b c is a second degree polynomial so this is a continuous function we had already seen right now let's look at j l and r okay uh, restrict the determinant to this to r okay now if a belong to j l and r okay determinant of a is non-zero therefore determinant of gl and r okay is contained in 
r star that is r minus 0 right we know this is not connected because this is minus infinity to 0 union 0 infinity this is not connected so if I prove th these are equal then it will follow JLNR is not connected yep equality holds okay why because if JLNR is connected determined as a continuous function the image must be connected but the image is all of R star so I have to prove determinant of JLNR is all of R star but that's very easy for example let's look at 111 the diagonal let me write it as a diagonal 111 where does it go to it goes to 1 under determinant whereas if I take diagonal minus 1 1 1 1 don't take minus identity that's a very natural thing many of my students take but where do you go to it will go to minus 1 right so this takes both the values but I can even do something better suppose I take a and for any a in r star let us look at this this will go to a right diagonal a a is in r star then this will be non singular matrix where does it go to it goes to a therefore I proved it's not connected okay and another method would be let us look at this map gl and r to r okay x going to okay determinant of x by modulus determinant of x okay since the determinant of x is never zero for, for x in gl and r okay this is always plus or minus one okay and x going to determinant x is continuous x going to modulus of determinant x is continuous therefore x going to the product of used continuous function is continuous therefore this is a continuous function from gl and r to r taking values only in plus or minus one so what i have done is i have shown okay if i take diagonal one 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 and diagonal minus one 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 this goes to one this goes to minus one okay therefore this continuous function is on that means JLNR is not connected do you follow that so pause review proceed the second one in the same spirit is all orthogonal matrices where a transpose stands for the transpose of a a t yeah this is a transpose so i don't want to get into these things so you must already know this okay this is one now determinant of a b is determinant a times determinant b and determinant of a transpose is same as determinant of a all these things are already known therefore if i look at determinant function a a transpose this will be determinant of a into determinant of a transpose but that's equal to determinant of a whole squared okay right okay but a a transpose is same as determinant of identity therefore that's equal to one therefore what i have concluded therefore i concluded if a is orthogonal determinant of a belong to plus or minus 1 okay determine a squared is 1 and remember this is a real number therefore it has to be either plus 1 or minus 1 so to show it's not connected what do you think I should do again show that it is thing. but let's look at the earlier matrix which I did diagonal of 1 1 1 and diagonal of minus 1 1 1 okay this my both of them belong to y and r and the determinant is 1 here and this is minus 1 here therefore y and r is not connected now you see the advantage of my definition 
characterization of conductors using continuous functions yeah let me just check i will share the thing yeah okay okay pause review proceed okay these are the two small things i wanted to talk about now let's look at an example right uh, let us see uh, i want to say r and rn for n greater than or equal to 2 are not homeomorphic So how do I do that? Okay, this is a trick which I have to learn. Let's go through. I look at this simple example. So suppose not, right? Therefore, there exists a homeomorphism. Yeah, from R n to R, R to R n, because then I can take the inverse image, right? Okay. Now let's look at the origin in R n or any point for that matter then let us look at Rn this ok so f restricted to that will again be homeomorphism onto its image right because if x from x to y is a homeomorphism and a is a subset of x then restrict f to a then it's a map from f to fa okay by various properties of continuity and subspace topology we had already seen when we reviewed subspace topology in this series this is a homeomorphism right therefore this will be a homeomorphism but do you see a problem now so that means rn minus 0 is homeomorphic to r minus a singleton homeomorphic but what do we know we know n is greater than or equal to 2 then this is connected but this is r minus any single point this is not connected because it's not an interval right but we know continuous image of any connected set must be connected that's a contradiction therefore we have proved Rn for n greater than or equal to 2 is not homeomorphic to R. Okay. So, pause, review, proceed. Let us recast the proof. So, what I did was say if f is a homeomorphism from to Rn to R then I restricted f to some subspace that is rn minus 0 and then the corresponding thing r minus singleton f of 0 then I said this is connected that means okay this is connected whereas it this has two connected it is made up of two connected subsets made up of meaning let us say design union of okay this is the thing which you are going to talk about today that is we break into so two connected components okay that's what we want to talk about right. a very general thing so let us make a definition before so let x be a topological space okay this this example is over stick to that okay now give me two points x and y in x i say x is equivalent to y if and only if there exists a connected subset c containing x so that x y both belong to c right for example if i take R2 minus the axis this therefore these are all removed okay if I take a point x1 y1 here 
and x2o to here okay there is no connected subset which will have them because that you have to check whereas if I take some other point x3 o3 here then they will be connected namely line segment do you follow that yeah okay now I want to say this is an equivalence relation and for example in R star if I take this is 0 so R star this is my space then if I take A and B both are have the same sign then A is equal to B if and only if do you understand if and only if A and B have the same sign and similarly if I have in this space I have x1 y1 is equal to x2 y2 if only if they lie in the same quadrant okay so pause look at this example try to understand what connected okay what uh, what is the relation about it okay I want to prove it's an equivalent relation so x is equal to x because take t equal to singleton set x we know singleton sets are connected right therefore x comma x belong to this point and if x is equal to y implies v is equal to x because if x is equal to y means there is a case c such that x and y belong to c therefore the same c i can say y and x belong to c and similarly if x and y and y is equal related to z i want to say x is related to z but that's easy because x is related to y what does it mean there exists c1 so that x y belong to c1 and y is related to z that implies there is a c2 so that y and c belong to c2 these are all connected sets okay i, I didn't say but you should know now let let's see equal to c1 union c2 this is a connected set this is a connected set they have a point in common namely y right singleton y yeah therefore by our really result this is connected and therefore x y z all belong to this connected set in particular x is related to z do you understand so pause review proceed okay now the next thing so since this is an equivalence relation okay so x is partition into equivalence classes equivalence classes so each equivalence class is called a connected component See, I'm writing connected. Uh, it is just a word, connected component. But I, I still have to say whether it's a connected sets or not. That time it's not very clear at present. Okay, it's very easy to prove. But let's do that. Are you following the question? Uh, yeah, it's like saying open ball. I call it an open ball, but to prove, I have to prove it's an open set. So the open ball is a single word for me similarly connected component is a single word that is why sometimes people may call it a component then you will say this component is a connected set but uh, there are so many components so I would like to talk about connected component because this relation is using connectedness ok so connected component I have to ok so the first thing let me say that ok first observation is each connected component is a connected set connected subset of x why remember we have already seen after the characterization of connectedness by means of continuous function if a is a set so that any two elements 
in a line a connected set. implies A is connected. This is one of the very first applications of our characterization. Do you understand? Now let's look at each connected component as a connected set. That's very clear because give me any x and y. Okay, okay, let us call this a component C. C. Okay. Or let me say component. Okay, let us call it C of. Okay. I'll call it a connected component A. Right. If x and y belong to A, remember that means x is equal to y. x is related to y. That means there is a connected set so that x and y belong to C and this C is contained in A. Therefore, by this characterization, by this characterization, I know that my connected component A is con connected. Are you happy? Yeah? Okay. Second thing, it is it is maximal in in the sense that may let me write maximal connected. What does it mean? Suppose A is a connected component and B a connected set so that A is contained in B then I want to say A equal to B. Right? Do you remember? Maximal ideal independent, maximal ideal it's exactly the same, similar thing. Or with respect to partial order it's in a maximal element. But then you should have learned partial order properly. Please check my foundation course lectures or even partial order there is a separate lecture two lectures please go through that anyway come back yeah, yeah. okay so when I say maximal connected what does it mean okay no if a subset B a connected subset B contains A then B must be A that is there cannot be any set which is which connected set which is bigger than A okay try to understand you repeat in your own word this is very clear why because you start with any x in b right what is that i want to prove so fix an a in a start with any x in b right now since a is contained in b and therefore x and a both belong to a but this is connected. So by the definition of A, what is the definition of A? A is an equivalence class, right? This A is nothing other than the equivalence class of A. Right? This is set of all Z in X so that Z is related to A. That means Z and A lie in X connected set. Alright? Now what is the thing I have done? You fix an A in A then you start with any x okay in b then x and a both lie in b b is connected that means x is related to a that means x lies in the equivalence class of a but equivalence class of a is nothing other than capital a yeah i hope all of you know that right okay these all basic equivalence class you are all msc students you should know this okay therefore what does it mean so x belong to a right this implies x belong to a therefore x belong to b implies x belong to a therefore a equal to b because a is already contained in b and this b and b is contained in a therefore i conclude a equal to b pause review proceed and third thing is easy if a is a connected component it is closed that is again easy why it follows from 2 because you remember A is contained in A closure and we had already seen that if A is connected 
then here closed resource are connected right but what did we learn from 2 2 says if B is any connected set containing A a connected component then B must be A that means A closure equal to A by 2 that means A is closed is that clear so pause review proceed ok so let us summarize we define any space ok we define equivalent solution x1 y x is related to y if there exists a connected set subset c of x says that x and y belong to c then you put this is an equivalent solution and equivalence classes are called connected components and x is the disjoint union of connected components right and each connected component what did you prove is connected maximal connected and closed okay this is the summary of connected sets yeah so let us look at a simple example if I look at R star then I find that what do I find this is the R star is union of minus infinity to 0 union 0 to infinity so these are the connected components let's look at R2 minus the axis that is x y equal to 0 that is removed okay then the connected components are open quadrants that again we had already seen okay this is one this is another this is a third this is a fourth okay that's very easy give me any x and y here okay all right okay now why they are connected that you know that is because you take any quadrant okay you can show it's connected because you start with any point x and y let us start with a point here right x and y in the third quadrant Now uh, let's look at the line segment 1 minus t. Okay, let me call this as a vector v1, this vector v2, this 1 minus v1 plus t times v2. Okay, so I'm here. I want to say this lies in the third quadrant because this will be 1 minus t into x1 plus t into x2 and similarly 1 minus t into y1 plus 1 t into y2 right I hope I wrote it correctly ok yeah this is x1 y1 sorry uh, let me just make sure this is x1 y1 plus t into x2 y2 therefore I add 1 minus t into x1 plus t into x2 right and so on now notice that if x1 and x2 are negative and t is greater than or equal to 0 therefore this will be negative you understand that so this sum of negative things similarly this sum of negative things therefore it lies in the third quadrant therefore each of the quadrant is connected okay and that's maximal why it's maximal suppose this contains anything other than that okay you have to prove it has to there is a there will be a problem okay why it's maximum connected question let us say why the third quadrant
because there may be a connected side which uh, connects this so you, you you don't have to think of line segment see this is at the beginners always have some tendency i showed connectedness by means of line segment there may be a connected set which okay which takes a point here and takes a point here there may be some connected set then what i have to prove if it is a connected set then i have to do something how do i prove that this will be a good exercise you see these are the things which are not done in standard classes so you simply mug up the definition but you should feel confident how to prove that right let us assume suppose pa if possible x1 y1 third quadrant and x2 o2 in the first quadrant okay let me call it uh, the vector u and let me call this vector v suppose u and u are related that means there is a connected set right okay now let us let us look at that so there is a connected set c subset of r2 so that u this is actually r2 minus axis it should be a connected set in this set okay so that u and v are there suppose i want to say they are not equivalent okay so if they are equivalent i have to arrive at a contradiction you follow that okay now let us look at the function you have from c to r right give me any point x y here i will map it to the first coordinate x this is continuous because this is nothing other than the projection from r to r right and restriction of uh, continuous map to any subset is connected sorry continuous therefore this is continuous right yeah but what does that mean that means at x1 so let's say f of u will be let us say my x1 u equal to let us say x1 y1 therefore it's x1 this is negative and f of v is x2 that is positive because it is in the first quadrant right but you had already seen intermediate theorem that is f from c to r this is con if this is connected then f of c must be connected subset r do you follow that yeah so now what do i know x1 belong to f of c where the this is uh, okay, this is uh, greater than zero uh, less than zero x1 right yeah x1 this is less than zero and x2 belong to f of c and x2 is positive now zero lies between them what does that mean that means okay there should exist a point by this is a connected set right are you following therefore zero belong to f of c because the interval x1 x2 must lie in f of c because this is connected and any connected subset of r is an interval x1 and x2 belong to f of c therefore the entire interval x1 to x2 must be in f of c and zero belong to x x1 x2 that means zero belong to f of c that means there exists a w in c so that f of w is zero but what is if i write w equal to x comma y what is f of w that is x that is x equal to zero All right that means there exists at a point zero comma y which is in c yeah but zero comma y belong to the axis a contradiction Have you understood this? Okay. Pause. Review. Proceed. So what I have shown, I have shown each of these quadrants. Each of these open quadrants are connected components. Okay, please go through this. This kind of exams are usually not done. 
just the definition theorem but why i am doing intuitively you can see these are the connected components but many student will feel uneasy yes okay how to prove it rigorously i have given example okay i hope you like it let us do that okay now let's look at uh, ordinary examples some very simple minded examples suppose i have x with a discrete topology then what are the connected components singletons right okay now uh, let us look at uh, r with a vip topology where of course zero is the vip what are the connected components remember in this case we have proved this is connected therefore if x is a connected space then the only the, the, then there is only one connected component only. namely x itself yeah right now what do i know about vip topology so what do i know about outcast topology okay go through those examples right okay but a very standard example many people will ask in many interviews etc is let's look at q as a subset of r with the usual topology okay so what are the connected components What are the connected components? I suppose X and Y belong to a C connected subset and C is contained in Q. Right? Suppose there exist two point distinct points which belong to a connected subset. Then I want to look at something. So I have X and Y. Let me assume X is less than Y. Then I know there exists an irrational number z, right? Okay. Now again we know that this sets minus infinity to z. This is open in where in R. Therefore, minus infinity to z intersection C is open in C. And similarly, z to infinity intersection C is open in C and C okay each this this and this are complement to each other because remember Z is irrational therefore Z cannot be a point of Q therefore my C is a union of minus infinity to, to Z intersection C and design union of Z infinity intersection C okay and what do i know x belong to the here and y belong to here therefore each or this is open this is open therefore each of them is a non-empty proper open as well as closed subsets you understand therefore c cannot be connected have you understood you follow that yeah Therefore, C is, is not connected. This is a contradiction. Okay, this contradiction shows, okay, a connected component of Q cannot have more than one element. The moment it has two elements, then it cannot be connected. Is what I showed. Yeah, please pause, review, proceed. A similar proof will also work for this. Suppose I have R with uh, lower limit topology. And we had already seen it, this is not connected. Okay, so what are the connected components? Again, exactly the same logic. Suppose C is a connected set in which A and B are there. 
and C is a subsorb or toggle. Okay, this is connected subset. Okay, now the, with the loss of generality, let me assume A is less than B. Then let's look at the picture. I have A, I have B. So let me take a point C strictly in between. Look at this. So I have minus infinity to C, yeah, and are you following? And union C to infinity. So this is open, and this is open in where? In toggle. Yeah, any open subset of because toggle is uh, finer than the usual topology. This, this open and double is open and usual topology, therefore this is open. Here we had already seen. Okay, this is open set in towel, but not in usual topology. But anyway, both are open and thing. This is the join union. Right? So oh this is C again. Let me say that uh, uh, D A to D D. Therefore, if I look at C intersection with or uh, minus infinity to D intersection with C and this is a disjoin union D infinity intersection C okay now A belong to this and B belong to this and each are non-empty open as well as closed and proper therefore what do I think Z cannot be connected so exactly similar to prove the earlier case therefore the connected components of R towel or again singletons. Okay. Very good. Now as I said this can be used to do lot of other things. Suppose let me look at uh, yes the alphabet C and the alphabet D. Remember D I am not writing like this. Do you see that this is like I am writing like semicircular arc with uh, the diameter joint okay this is my D this is English alphabet but I can think of them as I have drawn as a subset of R2 are they homeomorphic I claim they are not homeomorphic why notice that in D as I have drawn if I have drawn D if I take this point then there will be two connected this is a connected component okay this is joining here therefore this will be connected this is a connected set this is a connected set they have a point in common therefore this is also connected therefore there will be two connected components like this in there so my d is like this so if I first remove any point in d d okay let me write carefully d minus any singleton point is still connected but from c if I take any point okay What do I know? It's not connected. Yeah, here. But then remember, if I write C, this point and this point also included. Are you following? Yeah. So I want to argue these are not homeomorphic. Just I want you to understand this. So. Here, the unfortunately, so suppose if we saw homeomorphism from D, the D is again like this to C. Okay, suppose the homeomorphism. Right. Now, there exists a point X which goes to this point, and there is a point Y which goes to in C this point in D. These are in element, right? You understand? Now suppose I remove. Okay. Now start with the point Z in D, and Z is not equal to X. Z not equal to Y. Right. Then I had seen if I remove any point from D, D minus single turn is still connected. Right. But Z since F is a homomorphism, so in particular 
one one uh, etc therefore f of z cannot be equal to f of x f of z is f of x is this and z is not equal to f of y f of y is this therefore my f of z must be a point somewhere here but if I remove such a point then it becomes disconnected do you remember therefore you have restricted to d minus that point z to c minus f of z this is connected but this is not connected but this is still a homeomorphism ok so this contradiction shows d and c as I have drawn are not homeomorphic ok I hope you like this example similarly one can use a b c d e etc but uh, if I do like this it will take another 15 20 minutes but I think you should sit with your friend and discuss take a first you have to draw which a you want right? there may be a lot of ways of writing a will be only like this then it's okay similarly b okay stick to some definition of a and b as a subset of r2 with induced topology and try to see okay how many points you can remove how whether it will remain connected not connected okay these are the some exercises which you can do this will make you understand how to use connectedness to show things are not homeomorphic it doesn't do anything else because for example you rose let us look at okay just as a parting path why I want to say it, it cannot work is so let's look at this if I take 0 to 2 pi open to the circle unit circle okay cos theta sin theta in R2 right theta going to this okay this is a 1 1 continuous and a bijection right but these are not homeomorphic okay how do I prove these are not homeomorphic that's an interesting thing see f is a bijection bijection and continuous where of 0 2 pi 2 pi open right to the circle unit circle but they are not homeomorphic ok both look connected etc etc but we need extra topological properties to rule out that ok it's alright let's think about we will meet again i hope you enjoyed this lecture bye